Jeff Nelson, always great to visit with you. We're talking baseball today. That feels great. We know the parameters. It is a 60-game season when all is said and done. What are your thoughts? Well, at least baseball's back. I mean, that's the one thing. I wish it would have been back a long time ago, uh, but it didn't. Uh, they had a hard time coming to some sort of, uh, not an agreement, but to get this implemented. And I'm glad that it's coming back. At least 60 games is better than nothing. No season whatsoever. So now all Yankee fans and uh, fans all around the country can be and can look forward to their teams playing again. And that is the main thing. And there's so much to talk about, one of which is the fact that nobody is going to be able to afford a slow start. Everyone needs to get out of the gate quickly. Well, it's funny because all teams, uh, this will never happen before or ever again, that everybody's tied going into the month of August, you know, 0-0. Zero, zero. So you're right. Players sometimes get off to a slow start in April. You can't afford to do that. Teams sometimes get off to a slow start. Uh, you're not going to be able to come back if you have a bad August. Uh, you know, some of the good teams, if they have a bad August, they're going to be trying to really struggle to get back and reach the postseason. You might find some surprise teams that would never, ever be involved in a playoff run if it's a 162-game schedule. So I think that's going to make baseball a little bit more exciting with these 60 games teams and fans of teams that think, oh, we had no shot this year. They might actually have a shot. So that considered, then, are the favorites going to feel extra pressure? Well, they are. I mean, you look at the Yankees. You, you look at the Washington Nationals, maybe the Houston Astros. Uh, you have the Philadelphia Phillies, the Mets. Uh, teams like that, they have to get off to a good start. That You can't afford to have a bad week, have a bad series. Uh, even a player. I think the players are going to feel a lot of pressure knowing that, hey, I, every game counts even more so now with 60 games. You're going to play 40 in your division and 20 against your National League opponent that's in your Eastern division like the Yankees. They're going to play the National League East. Every game is almost like a playoff game, is a must-win game. It, 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 the pressure, I think, is a lot greater than it would be if you started in April. What about approach, Jeff, both mental and physical, position players and pitchers? Well, hopefully everybody has been working out uh, all throughout this in case anything happened to get it, they happen to get a start date. Uh, so it's hard to simulate game situation, you know, the adrenaline of facing a hitter or the position player facing a pitcher. Uh, for a reliever, it's a lot easier to get ready for this July 23rd, July 24th start, whichever teams start July 23rd, because you're used to a shortened spring training. Spring training's not really for the relievers anyway. You're gonna get your 10 innings in and then you're done. Spring training is usually for starters. So for the starters, trying to work their, their arm strength back, get their pitch count up. You might see maybe through the first three or four starts, they only go three or four innings, maybe 50, 60, 65 pitches. Uh, I don't know what's going to happen in spring as far as having spring training games. Maybe the Yankees go across and play, play the Mets. You know, that, that may happen. Uh, for position players, it's going to be difficult as well because, you know, taking swings off of a guy just throwing batting practice or maybe a, a, uh, a jugs batting practice machine is going to be a lot tougher once you go to a pitcher throwing to you. So when you talked about getting off to a slow start, it's going to be tough for those guys. All of a sudden, they have a bad week, bad two weeks. The pressure starts to rise in them, and maybe they put a little bit more pressure on themselves because it is a shortened season. Also, we haven't thought about the managers. The managers are going to be a lot of pressure on them as well because 60 games left, they're going to have to manage like every game's a postseason game. You know, you look at the Yankees and the Mets, for instance. They're going to have to manage these games like, hey, we have to win. We can't afford to lose a series. We can't afford to have a bad week or a bad month. Uh, the one nice thing is, though, uh, you look at Aaron Judge, you look at Paxton, you look at Stanton, some of these guys that are really have had injuries throughout the season or maybe a hard time staying on the field have 60 games now. It's almost, hey, as soon as they're healthy, it's full bore. Maybe you ride these guys a little bit longer. Like uh, Stanton, you might ride him a little bit longer instead of, hey, you know, uh, during our whole 162 games, you may give him some time off or give him a DH spot every now and then. Now you can ride some of these guys, and now you just hope these guys stay healthy for these 60 games.
And you touched on a very important point, and that is the health protocol with regard to the virus and how important it is to be respectful and committed to your teammates and mind your behavior. It's really tough. Yeah, you're right. You know, it's really going to be tough because, you know, 25 guys, well, this year would have been 26. You're a family and you're around your, these guys a lot more than your own family. You know, you're used to hugging each other, high-fiving each other, slapping guys on the back. Um, doing things during the regular season that you're not going to be able to do now. You know, maybe sit in the dugout next to a guy. Maybe a pitching coach coming and putting their arm around you and saying, hey, this is what you're doing right, this is what you're doing wrong, or, or a hitting coach the same way. Um, you know, you're not allowed, to, not allowed to chew tobacco, sunflower seeds. You'll see pitchers out there with wet rags not allowed to go to your mouth. That is going to be really tough. I mean, it's such a – baseball, I mean, even sports is such a habit-forming – uh, atmosphere that you're just you it's just second nature that you do some of these things and now you're not going to be able to do them now you're really going to have to be aware so not just some of the superstars stay healthy and be able to complete the 60 games and then hopefully the Yankees get into the postseason but it's everybody else around them what are your expectations Jeff with regard to the quality of baseball play we're going to see once everyone gets going I think it's going to be great baseball. I still, you know, guys, like I said, I think they've really uh, have kept in shape. Um, they have just waited for this moment to happen. And I, I think it's going to be really good baseball. I think because of the 60 games, because of the shortened season, uh, the must win mentality they have to have now, uh, you're going to see a lot of great baseball. I expect the Yankees to go full bore. They take these three or four weeks of spring training, take it really serious get everybody healthy, start lining up their rotation. You're going to start with 30 guys. Then it dwindles down after two weeks to 28, then 26, and then they get ready for the playoffs. Do you like the rule changes and experimentations, the universal DH, the man on second to start extra innings? Well, I always loved the DH. You know, I played in the American League my whole career, and I always thought that was the toughest lineup out of both leagues, obvious, because you don't have the pitcher hitting. I, I want to see the DH. You know, I don't like seeing the pitcher hit at all. Uh, but it also, it also opens up an extra spot for uh, maybe a, a superstar that might have to take a day off in the National League that actually you'll get to see him play, maybe get to see him hit. Uh, I've always been a fan of the designated hitter. The runner on second, I, I don't like it at all, but I get it. You know, the one nice thing that I, that I did see and did read that it's not an earned run, because being a pitcher – you don't want to all of a sudden have that guy on second base, and if he scores, it's an earned run, and it's against your ERA, and your ERA means everything, especially when you go in to the co uh, contract negotiations or you want to see it the next day in the paper. You want to see – you don't want to see an L, but you don't want to see that earned run average climb up there. Uh, I understand what they're doing. Uh, they, want to, they, don't, they want to try to eliminate going deeper into the games, uh, the 15, 16-inning 16, 16 games. I don't like it. I think some of the – some of, the excellent, excellent baseball and some of the, the, uh, the excitement that baseball gives is when it does go 15 and 16 innings. But I understand. Hopefully it's just these 60 games and then absolutely no more of that. What do you feel about the 60-game schedule and then crowning a champion? How legitimate will this year's World Series winner be to you? Well, you ask any of the players, and if whoever wins the World Series and they get a ring next year, they, they don't care how, how many games they play, they still got a ring. And if you're a Yankee or a Yankee fan, who cares if it's 60? Add number 28 to the list. So it really doesn't matter uh, how many games they play. Obviously, I won four with the Yankees, 160. We did it the whole season. Um, maybe it gives some of these teams a chance that never would have had a chance to get to the playoffs. But, you know, ultimately it's 60 games. But if you're a player and you have to win the World Series, and hopefully the Yankees do, you know, I don't think it matters how many games you play. Fantastic. Thanks, Jeff. So excited to be talking baseball. Can't wait to see you in person. Yeah, absolutely, Nancy. Thanks.